Fuck yeah! Okay, okay, we are in business. Iterate, iterate, iterate. Yes, three-dimensional. I feel like one day I just woke up and Blender 4.0 is at my doorstep. I didn't know that was the case, but there's great new features like the repeat zone. In other words, a serial loop, and that's what I want to talk about today. The repeat zone is more like a proper loop where it's going to execute something over and over and over again on a frame, whereas the simulation zone is going to repeat between frames. So one of them is kind of like time dependent, and this one is not. Let me give an example. So kind of a dumb example here, but imagine you have a cube that for some reason you want to extrude again and again and again. Traditionally, the way you would do this is you would add a extrude mesh node right here and you can see it extruded the mesh, but then every time we want to repeat this process, we have to add the node again, and again, and you can see each time it's expanding. And this isn't too much trouble, but what happens when we need to do this for like 20 iterations? Does adding this node or even a node group over and over and over again make sense? No, it doesn't. So what we're going to do instead of this extrude mesh again and again and again is we are going to use the repeat zone. The way it works is we need to put in our operation, in this case we want to extrude, inside the repeat zone. Geometry goes in, it gets extruded, it gets outputted, and then it gets wired back to the beginning. And it's gonna do that uh, depending on the number of iterations we have. So in the last case, we had three iterations. So I'm gonna increase that to three, give it a input geometry, and then output the geometry. And you can see it gives us the same result. But the difference is we can now modularly, modularly, uh, change how many times we are repeating this extrusion. So to make the Menger sponge, <laughs> fuck. So to make the Menger spun fractal, here's what we are going to do, and we're going to utilize the repeat zone. I'm gonna start off with the cube, and I'm going to change its geometry such that it is going to be a plane, and I want this to be kind of a three by three. So I'm gonna add loop cuts here and loop cuts here. Now you might not know how to make this yet, but what you do know is fractals are repeated processes. That's kind of what it is. It turns out the process for this one is just taking the middle face and deleting it. And this kind of donut shape is what we are going to iterate over and over and over again. So the first node I want to add in here, it turns out is a dual mesh node, which kind of seems like a weird thing. But what this is going to do is it's going to give us a vertex at every single face, which is where we want to instance. So you can see faces, vertices, and now all we need to do is kind of like self-referentially instance this thing. So I'm going to instance on points, and for that instance, what we want is the mesh that we began with. Now you can see that this is overlapping, it's kind of a cool design actually, but we don't want it to overlap. So what we need to do is we need to take the scale and make it a third as big. And this is because when we iterate, each time it needs to get three times smaller to fit the bounds of the last iteration. And this is the operation that we want to repeat over and over and over. So kind of the next step in the process would be doing a dual mesh, which is gonna take all these new faces and turn them into vertices. And then again, what we wanna do is we wanna instance on points, the original mesh, and we can keep the one third scale and you can see automatically it's good to go. And to make this more and more detailed, we gotta again, repeat this process. Okay, this is an operation we wanna repeat over and over and over again. So clearly what we wanna do is we wanna take our operation, in other words, these two nodes and put them inside the repeat zone. So I'm going to add a repeat zone. Still kind of weird that this is what it's called, but whatever. Inside the repeat zone, I'm basically going to recreate what we had before. So first of all, a dual mesh, and second of all, a instance on points node. And now we can get rid of the original stuff and swap this out with the repeat zone. So for the initial geometry, we want to feed in the initial geometry. And then for the output geometry, we want to feed in the output geometry. And you can see that this makes our mesh invisible because we forgot a crucial step. If you look back at this, we don't have anything to instance. Now remember, each time we want to instance, we want to take that original donut mesh. So we can take the original input and put that in here. And now you can see we actually get something. Thing. And this is kind of an important point. Just because you have a repeat zone doesn't mean you can't feed in something like externally. It doesn't always have to come from the repeat input, especially if it's something that's a constant that gets repeated each time. And now the magic of this is we have the iteration slider, which we can change to zero, which is going to be our initial geometry without any of the operations. And as we increase the iteration count, you see we get more and more and more complicated. Actually, arbitrarily, 
complicated depending on the resolution in some sense you want. So just to kind of close this out, we are going to take a new input for the modifier and connect this to the iteration count because this in itself is a parameter. And now our geometry nodes has a external slider or external input where we can change the resolution of this. So that is the Menger sponge. Let's make a 3D version. Obviously, because this is going to be 3D, we are going to need different geometry. Particularly, we are going to go from a plane to a cube, and this is something that we are going to repeat again and again and again. You could use an array for this, but I'm going to use kind of like the brute force approach, so make sure you duplicate on the x-axis by 2, and then make sure to do that again. So just like before, we had like a 3-unit long thing, we're going to still have that in 3 dimensions. Select everything and also duplicate it on the y-axis by 2, and then again by 2, and then finally select everything, and then on the z-axis, as you might have expected, uh, repeat everything by 2. And just to keep this nice and tidy, I'm going going to select everything and make sure that it's centered. Actually, probably a faster way to do this is we are going to set the origin to geometry and then center this out. And now the three-dimensional equivalent to kind of punching a hole in this in three dimensions is we are going to need to do that with a couple of our cubes. So hover over a cube and click L to make sure it's selecting the whole cube and we can delete that. So now it punches out a cube. Do this for the center cube as well, and we are going to do this for every single side so you can see how it gets complicated. And imagine a four dimensional Menger, sp Menger sponge, maybe for the next tutorial. So I should have selected them all, and then we are going to delete faces. And you can kind of tell that this is the three dimensional equivalent to what we had before. Now, this time we are going to follow a similar process, but it does get a bit more complicated. Instead of using a dual mesh, which will add a vertex on each face, and this isn't actually what we want. We need a different method to kind of take each cube and turn that into a single point. Luckily, there is a simple solution for this. We are going to merge by distance, making sure it's set to connected by a large distance like three. And this is going to make a vertex at each cube. So you can see the before and after. Basically, what's happening is each cube gets kind of compressed to the middle because we are only using the connected geometry. So that is why this works. And just as before, we are basically going to repeat what we had, although instead Instead of dual mesh, we use merge by distance. We are going to instance on point, this time a three-dimensional mesh. And also, just like before, we need to scale this by a factor of, or descale it by a factor of three. So scale by a third. And at this point, you know the drill. This is all something we want to repeat inside the repeat zone. And just like before, we need a instance that is always the same. In other words, the input geometry from the beginning. And this is going to be a constant. Now let's take our iterations modular slider and connect it to iterations and now we have, let me make this a bit more visible with a cavity mapping. Let's actually also enable shadow just for clarity. Imagine getting this level of detail using like normal modeling or having to repeat these nodes again and again and again. You can see how this is kind of like a faster method. Now I'm going to do one more fractal to really hammer the point home. So for now I'm going to mute the repeat zone so it doesn't actually do anything. This time I'm going to add in a circle with only three vertices. What is he thinking? What I'm thinking is I'm going to take this, click F to kind of fill it in, and we are gonna subdivide. And now some of you might know what we're gonna do here. Uh, we are gonna make kind of the Sierpinski triangle, or what I like to call it is the repeated kind of Triforce. It turns out that this is the exact same algorithm as the Menger sponge. I think the only difference is we might scale by a different factor. I need to think that through, but uh, we do the dual mesh, we instance on points, and now I'm going to unmute the repeat zone. And this isn't showing anything because we don't have an instance. We want to put the original geometry, which looks like it's working, but this actually is not what we want. We want to scale this down. Is it by a third? It is not. It should be by a half, it turns out. And let's check out our iterations, making sure that this is working, and indeed, we have our Sierpinski triangle. I think it finally worked. Let's see if I'm crazy. Take the instance on points, please God. Unmute it, yes. Fuck yeah. Okay, okay, we are in business. Iterate, iterate, iterate. Yes, <laughs> three dimensional. I did, was it worth it? 
Yes. Okay, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. So there you go. The repeat zone that I guess I just didn't know existed. If you want the project files for these like three dimensional fractals, or you just want to support what I do here. So project files, support, whichever way you lean, there's a link in the description for Patreon, which is what lets me make the tutorials for free. Otherwise it would probably be on Udemy or something like that. So the repeat zone, the bane of my existence, we are done with that.